Has anyone heard the statement, chanting is not lip deep, it's heart deep? Any of you heard that? That was said by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And he said, you're not chanting with your lips, you're chanting with your heart. So we're going to do an exercise about chanting with your lips. I mean, excuse me, chanting with your heart. Okay? That if you look at the meanings of the holy name given to us by the acharyas, they're all in the form of prayers. So we're going to do an exercise now in which you are going to chant, and while you are chanting, periodically I'm going to recite the meanings that have been given to us by the acharyas. And what you are going to do is you are going to enter into the mood of those meetings, meanings as I'm presenting them to you. So I'm going to be shifting your consciousness a little bit as you're chanting. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who has written much about the chanting of the Holy Name, said that while chanting, you should meditate on the meaning of the Holy Name. So now we, we've given you so many things to do while you're chanting, you're probably confused. You said, I should feel this, then I should feel that, and I should adjust this way and that. Yeah. And now here's another one to confuse you. I should meditate on what the Holy Name means. But it's not actually that complicated because if you put it all together and mix it up as a kitri, it all really comes amounts to the same thing, that we're just trying to connect with to Krishna through our prayers, through feeling. And you will see that by doing this exercise. So what I'd like you to do is begin chanting japa. And as you're chanting, I'm going to speak to you, and I don't want you to stop chanting, but I want you to adjust to the idea of meditating on this meaning while you chant. And you remember yesterday the example I gave of the when I was across the street yelling, Mom, Mom. So within that call to my mother, there was a lot of emotion and a lot of meaning. So what did that Mom mean? It meant, I'm across the street, please come and get me, right? So when we say meditate on the meanings, it's actually to take that meaning into a feeling. Not that you stay in your head, because we've been talking about getting out of our head, right? So when Prabhupada says, for example, the meaning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is, Krishna, please engage me in your service. When I say that to you, you want to take that concept and make it an emotion and a feeling. So please engage me becomes a feeling, not a thought. Because if it's a thought, there's no feeling, right? So that's the idea. So it's not meant... You just keep in your head, this is what it means, but it's, at, it's actually meant to make that meaning how you express your chanting in terms of your feelings. Okay? So the only thing that's a little maybe disconcerting about this exercise is once you get in one mode, about 45 seconds later, I'm going to put you in another mode with another meeting. So you'll have to keep switching. So if you're really into one mode and I switch you out, Please forgive me, but just kind of go along with it, as this will make some imprint or impression on you as to the different meanings of the Holy Name. And it will give you different experiences. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, so begin chanting and chant. Um, uh, if you like, okay, before we begin chanting, I could offer a suggestion. That... There are different kinds of japa, and one japa is when you chant very loudly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And one kind is when you chant softly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. You're almost whispering, or you can whisper. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So, why don't we try the whispering japa as an experiment? Now you might say, but I need to chant loudly because my mind goes crazy. But as we said, it's difficult to control the mind, but if you go into the heart and feel, you won't have so much trouble with your mind. And 
you can scream inside and chant softly. Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You could be screaming, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, inside, and it comes out, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Anyway, it's, an, it's something you can experiment with. If it's, if it's really, really difficult for you to do this, after you've done it for a minute or two, then you can revert back to the normal way you chant. But I'd like to offer this to you just as something to try on, to see if this is something you'd like to do. For some devotees, although this may sound sort of paradoxical, some devotees find out that they're more focused on the mantra when they chant softly. It kind of brings everything more internalized. Okay, so begin chanting softly, and as you're chanting, about every 30 to 45 seconds, I will recite a different meaning of the Maha Mantra, and then you'll go and try to go into that Anubhav, that emotion, that, no, Anubhav means mood, go into that mood. Okay? Okay, so let's begin chanting. Please engage me in your service. O oh, Radha, O oh, Krishna, please engage me in your service. Please accept me. Please accept me.
Oh, my friend, oh, my friend. Capture my heart and deliver me from bondage to this material world. Capture my heart and deliver me from bondage to this material world. Please pull my heart to you. Please pull my heart to you. Please still my heart with your sweetness. Please still my heart with your sweetness. Make me steady in my devotion. Make me steady in my devotion.
please, may I develop a taste for you, please, may I develop a taste for you. Make me worthy to engage in your service. Make me worthy to engage in your service. Please show me how to serve you. Please show me how to serve you. Okay, we can bring our chanting to a finish. 
I know you don't want to stop. But I have to invoke my Hiranyakashipu Shakti and tell you to stop chanting. Okay. So, how did you like that? Better than boring dry japa? So this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur's instruction to meditate on the meaning. And as we said, by meditating we enter into the mood of what it means. And that mood then becomes an experience by which we are asking, begging, praying to Krishna to uplift us, to purify us. This is only some of the meanings, but every desire, spiritual desire in your heart can be offered as a meaning to the Holy Name. Krishna, please, you can fill in the blank. That can be your prayer according to the circumstance you're in at a particular time. Please empower me. Please help me deal with this problem. Please enlighten me. Please make the path clear. Please make me pleasing to you. Whatever it is. Okay? So we're coming near the end, and when we come to the end of the Japa workshop, one of the things that is important to do is to talk about our life outside of japa and how our life outside of japa affects our japa. So, Satyanandan Swami says, you must work outside of your 16 rounds for your 16 rounds, which means that our activities when we're not chanting certainly will have some effect on our consciousness, which will then affect the quality of our japa. We were speaking with Naratam today, Rohini Kumar's son, and we were talking about soap operas. And Naratam thought a soap opera was an opera about dish soap, was it? Or dishwashing, was it? So, it's about it's an opera about dishwashers. Okay. So now we're going to talk about soap operas. So if you watch soap operas, especially at night time, that is going to affect your japa the next day, don't you think? I mean, if you read Bhagavatam at night, or you watch a soap opera at night, you're going to be in a different consciousness. Because whatever you expose yourself to is affecting you. So, we say we are what we eat. We're also, we are what we see, and we are what we hear. And we are what we associate with. And so that's the idea. So, what do you do outside of your 16 round? Well, okay, these are the questions. What do you do outside of your 16 rounds that nourishes your japa? And what do you do outside of your 16 rounds that hinders your japa? So it's a little self-reflection. You just want to answer these questions on your paper. And you are bringing awareness to what in your lifestyle is supporting your japa. And you want to maintain that, increase it if you can. And you, particularly, you want to bring awareness now to anything you're doing in your life that may have a detrimental effect on your japa, such as staying up late, because then you get up late. Correct? Tikache, tike, you go to bed late, you get up late. One guru does not tell his disciples to get up early. He only tells them to go to bed early. So think about what you do in your life that may be having a positive effect, and think about what you're doing that may be having a negative effect. And when you finish your answers, Write one more in each column when you think you're finished, okay? Try to dig up something else that may be under the surface you haven't thought of. Chanting especially? Yeah. Okay. But if I'm with non-devotees and when I see them enjoying their material life, having all the uh, valuables with them, I feel also can, I also can 
uh, enjoy these things. I am capable of enjoying. Then it, it disturb, disturbs my, my mind. So you're saying by association of non-devotees, your material desires become activated yeah. by seeing them yeah. enjoy. Don't worry, they're not enjoying. It just looks like it. If they were really enjoying, they wouldn't be hankering after all these things because they would be happy. And the fact that people are hankering and doing so many things to be happy means they're not happy, right? If you're happy, you don't have to do all those things. Yes? It just looks like they're happy. Yeah. But we know better. So what's the moral of the story? Associate with devotees more. I, I, I want to avoid uh, association with non-devotees. I want to avoid associating with non-devotees. Well, Lord Chaitanya said something really heavy. I might as well tell you what he said. He was asked, how do you know, or what's the prominent symptom or characteristic of a devotee? And he said, they don't associate with non-devotees. That's the prominent characteristic of a devotee. The prominent behavior, the most, how do you know, or what was the question? What, yeah, what is the characteristic of a devotee? He doesn't associate with non-devotees. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur said association means friendship. Not that you're just associating, but you're intimately connected with them. That's association. Tadati pratikanati guyam akati pritchtati. Revealing one's mind, exchanging president, presence, prasadam, food. That's intimate association. So when he says he doesn't associate with devotees, he means not intimately. But association with devotees is so powerful because you, you imbibe the qualities of the other devotees, even you don't have it. And vice versa, as you're saying. Hiranyakashipu said what you said. He said, when you're with somebody, you reflect their qualities. So yeah. the good ones and the bad ones. Pure devotee, same thing, yeah. You can associate with a pure devotee, become pure. You can associate with an impure person, become impure. You don't have to make any effort. It just happens. All I have to do is show up in that sangha. Yes, Avan. Okay, uh, things that hinder my japa are losing temper. Uh, I have like low tolerance level with... Uh, Mainly the world around me. <laughs> oh, okay. Intolerance. <laughs> Intolerance. And uh, watching TV because uh, when I have a hectic day, I don't do my japa directly. To de-stress, I mainly go to, for the television. Right. You watch those dishwashing operas? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just light, funny comedy. Yeah. I guess it's better than alcohol. <laughs> Could be worse, huh? Um, but the, the interesting thing is that one of my god sisters, Urmala, read a, she wrote an article about television and she said, you know, we're trying to stay away from the material world and then you turn on the TV and it's right in your living room, you know, it's like you invited it in, you know, it just comes in and takes over. So I've noticed um, um, Indians like television and movies more than Americans. Many American, most American devotees don't even watch television. Just, I also heard if you want to put your kid in school at Govinda Gardens, one of the regulations is you can't have television in your house because they don't want the kids to be exposed to it. And there's a doctor who recommends when you take consultation from him, he's a naturopathic doctor, that you don't watch television because there's too much negativity there, at least when you watch the news. And he recommends buy a juicer. He said, you can't be my patient if you don't have a juicer. And then he says, if you don't, if you can't afford a juicer, sell your television and buy a juicer. Yes. Uh, shall I continue? Sure, a couple more. Uh, seeing negativity in the world around me and uh, of course forgetting when the mind gets more involved we forget uh, Krishna and the unity of God so that is I think the first moment which leads to all the rest of the negativity which follows yeah. okay here's a good formula 
for becoming discouraged. It works every time. Focus on discouraging things long enough and you will become discouraged. Guaranteed. Isn't it? Like, oh, this is bad and that's bad and this is bad. If you focus on what's bad long enough, you become completely discouraged. Isn't it? So I have to be careful to not be overly focused on the negative because it can be very discouraging. And we can become apathetic. So I went to a workshop and they said, anytime you're discouraged, turn it around and encourage somebody in the opposite way that you're discouraged. So let's say something very negative is happening. Someone says, Avan, you're bad. So they said, go out and tell somebody you're good. So you, you kind of change the energy that you're dealing with. Oh, I've been looking for a job, I can't get one. And my next door neighbor got a job. Go and say, I'm so happy you got a job. Isn't that interesting? Usually we, you know, if we didn't get the job, we don't want anybody to get the job, right? That makes us happy. So flip it around and, and and turn the energy around. There's one devotee named Peter Burwash. He does a lot of self-development, and he says there's a lot of people called the yeah, but people. So you say, it's a nice day today. Yeah, but it's going to rain later. <laughs> you know? So he says instead of yeah, but, be, but yeah. Things are bad, but yeah, it's going to get better. <laughs> so we can, um, we can create positives. We're all looking at the same thing, right? Somebody's negative, somebody's positive. We're all living in the same place, the same world. So it's an, important for us to be encouraged in spiritual life because if we lose enthusiasm, then we become apathetic. And Prabhupada said, if you lose your enthusiasm, then you don't have any energy for devotional service. And our Shastra's Nectar of Devotion, they say you should be enthusiastic. And they're teaching us to be enthusiastic. Why? Because we're not always enthusiastic. And obviously, if we were all enthusiastic, no one would have to tell us be enthusiastic. So when Shastra says, or Prabhupada says, be enthusiastic, the supposition but the, the presumption is we're not naturally enthusiastic about spiritual life, so we have to force ourselves a little bit. And so when we do that, even force ourselves to be positive, we'll naturally be more positive. Like we said, I love to chant. Right? So one time someone told Prabhupada, I don't want to bow down. He's an American. So I don't know, I, I, and Prabhupada said, why not? And he said, I don't feel like it. And Prabhupada said, well, just do it. And if you do it, you'll feel like it. So sometimes we might be negative, but let's do something positive. And then by doing something positive, it changes the way we feel. If you wait to be positive, you may not be. But if you just do something positive, you will feel that. And I'm giving uh, classes online. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, well, I do online classes. Oh, we'll send you an email. We'll tell you about it. So I'm doing these online classes on humility. So naturally this comes up. Well. If I'm not humble, isn't it artificial to pretend I am? You know, act humbly. Oh, Prabhu, you're so great. Can I wash your feet? Can I get you something? I said, that, that seems artificial. And it is artificial, but at the same time, the action generates the feelings of humility. If you serve, if you appreciate, if you honor. Even if it's not genuine, it starts to become genuine. So we can create positive in our life, even when it's not there through our actions. Is that good? Yeah. And everything we're doing in Krishna consciousness before it becomes spontaneous is a little bit forced. Because maybe I don't have an attraction to the holy name enough that on my own I would chant 16 rounds. So it's a little bit artificial in a sense, but we have to do that. Because it's necessary to develop the taste. So if you act humbly, you'll feel it eventually. 
So now we're going to do another exercise, and we're going to pass out a sheet called Collecting the Gems. And Collecting the Gems has questions. And these questions are meant to help you consolidate what you've learned in the workshop. And so all you have to do is answer the questions on the paper, and then you, you're not turning the paper in. The paper is solely for you. in a more positive frame of mind, okay? So, what is the challenge that we're going back into our lives with? It is this. Our main, um, we want to overcome this kind of japa. Japa in which our main objective is to finish our rounds. Japa in which we are distracted by what is going on outside of and inside of us. We are absorbed more in our life and mind than in the name and Krishna. We chant mechanically rather than from the heart, and we don't make japa our number one priority. You agree? These are the main challenges. Okay. Improving japa comes when we make a shift in our priorities and make a deeper commitment to improving japa. When we do this, we automatically utilize the tools we gain at the workshop or retreat. As I was saying yesterday, your intention to improve is foundational to utilizing what you've learned today. Because if you don't really want to improve, why would you utilize anything you've learned? Right? So I can buy you a tool set, you can put it in your house, but you may never use it if you're not inclined to build anything. Okay, now this is very important. This is the mindset we want to have when we leave. Number one, you should leave the workshop with a mindset, I will improve my japa gradually throughout my life, rather than thinking, quote, the japa workshop was great, but I am afraid I won't be able to maintain such good japa at home. Now, I have to tell you something we were just talking about. And it was good, I was just talking with one of the devotees. And the devotee expressed this, that I'm afraid my, uh, what would you, where, where, where are you? We were just talking. Where did you go? Yeah. What did you say? You're afraid that Maya will... Maya will come to destroy your japa. Um, I once said, Maya is after your japa. Watch out, she's after your japa. It's the first place she's going to attack. But then I explained to him something quite interesting about Maya. Maya only comes when you invite her. Did you know that? So, Maya's so strong. She's always bothering me. No, that's because you're inviting her over. Does Maya come to the home of pure devotees? Why? Because they don't invite her over. So when you say Maya is strong, then my response to you is, why did you invite her over to your home? Because all Maya's service is, is to fulfill your material desires. And if you have material desires, that's your invitation for her. So she comes knocking at your door. Here I am, you want this, you want that. But if you don't want it, she's not going to come, because she has no business with you. Maya does not have business with a pure devotee. She's only reciprocating with your desire. So when, when, you were say, when he was saying, I'm afraid Maya may come and steal my japa, or steal my good japa, I said, it's not Maya you have to worry about, it's you you have to worry about, because she's not going to steal it if you don't want her to. You understand? Maya can only act where there's somebody willing to interact with her. If you're not willing to interact with her, she'll leave you alone. And Prabhupada said she'll take you back to Godhead. She'll actually help you. When you're pure, she'll help you back to Godhead. So don't blame your problems on Maya. Look to yourself as the one who's inviting Maya. Okay? So, so our thinking should be the first line here, I will improve my japa. Don't be afraid that you won't. Because if you're afraid that you won't, then you're really afraid of yourself. And you're affirming that you're powerless. And I don't believe you if you tell me you're powerless. 
It's not true. So rather than thinking, I can't trust myself, or I don't know if I'm going to do this, or Maya's going to come, and it's going to be difficult, go out with a more positive attitude that this is really good and this is what I want to do, and I'm going to do it. And I know I can do it. I'll set my intention and we'll make it happen. And if I slip, if I fail, I'll just get up and continue. That's the proper mindset. And if you have that mindset, I can guarantee you'll be successful. 100% guarantee. No problem. But if you have this other mindset, you're going to fail because you're focused on your failure. You're focused on your fear. Oh, I hope this doesn't happen. Now you're focused on what you hope doesn't happen. And then that's what happens. What you're hoping doesn't happen, happens. So rather than, I hope, rather than say, I hope this doesn't happen, focus on what you want to happen. Who do you want to be in control of your life? You and Krishna or your fears and weaknesses? Krishna won't run for you, but he will run with you. Put your hands in the air and give your weakness over to Krishna. It is not, it is not our, my japa, it is our japa. You understand? It is not my job, it is our job. Focus on where you want to go, don't be discouraged about where you are. And definitely don't focus on where you don't want to go, where you're afraid might go right now. So what happens is a lot of us become discouraged because we're not as Krishna conscious as we would like to be. Right? So where we are at now is not so significant. What is significant is where we're looking to go. That's what's most important. Just like Prabhupada was in India, but he was looking to go to America. So he had high ideals, make the world Krishna conscious. That was what was important. In India, before he came, not much was happening. But that didn't matter because he had his ideal. So that's, you always want to live in your ideals. Don't worry about where you are so much. If you worry too much about where you are, you'll stay there. But if you focus on where you want to go, you'll get there. Does that make sense? Okay. It doesn't matter where you have come from or even where you are now. What matters is where you are going. A man is judged by his ideals. A word of caution. Okay. Don't become critical of others if you see they are not chanting well. The tendency for this can increase after a japa workshop. Because now you know what not to do. You're going to notice other people are not doing what they should do. Appreciate that others are trying to chant. Yes? Okay. Just try to become absorbed in chanting by, and this is what we've learned, hearing and feeling the name with an open heart, receiving the mercy and kindness of the name, appreciating the name, meditating on the meanings of the name, Chanting with feeling, Krishna, please. Chanting to repair your broken relationship, Krishna, please accept me. Chanting well is the greatest gift you can give yourself. Give yourself the nectar for which you are always anxious. There is nothing but the holy name in the 13 worlds. Okay, your life is your message. What's your message? When you show up, if you have a taste for chanting, other people will have a taste. You can very easily get other people to chant when you have a taste. Yes? So, whatever you are, whatever you believe, that's your billboard. And wherever you go, that message is there. Yes or no? Yes, okay. Um, the more you're relishing the holy names, the more natural it will be to get others to chant. Does your life teach Chan Hare Krishna and your life will be sublime, or does your life teach Chan Hare Krishna and your life will be miserable? Right? Okay. So, these are very, very useful, especially before you begin chanting. So, what we're going to do now is why don't you all stand up and we'll recite these together, and this will be the official end of the workshop. Okay? And we'll recite these in unison together, and I will lead you. Are we ready? Are we ready?
I happily and enthusiastically welcome the holy names every japa session. I chant my rounds with focus and attention. When I chant, I chant. I get to chant, I want to chant, and I love to chant. I treat the Maha Mantra as Radha and Krishna, fully present in sound. I feel Krishna's kindness, mercy, and affection coming to me through his holy names. My beads are my direct connection with Krishna and my ticket back to Godhead. I fully honor my sacred relationship with the holy names during Japa. I turn off my world and turn on Krishna's world when I chant my rounds. I chant in full awareness that the holy name is my greatest treasure. I chant from my heart, feelingly praying to come closer to Krishna. I meditate on the meanings of the names as I chant. I chant to be accepted by Krishna and to repair my broken relationship with him. I chant to please Radha and Krishna, not for my personal pleasure. I am totally dependent on Guru and Krishna to chant quality japa. I organize my life to make japa the most important activity of my day. I relish chanting the holy names. Harinam Prabhu Ki Jai. So there's one more thing you have to do before the kirtan, and I'll show you on the slide. This is what you do. You give everyone a hug like you did last night. And while you're doing that, we will set up for the kirtan. Okay? Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.